jazz club, you know, he says, well, you know, I don't, I don't go to jazz clubs because I'm a Muslim. Boom. 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 Just like that, right? Just like that. I didn't even know who this guy was, man. And he's talking about, I don't go to, because I'm a Muslim. Wow. He was the captain of security, and what he was doing was just checking the, doing his, his rounds, checking the office, the, the office, the security officers, making sure they were there. So he said, uh, why don't you come with me? Now, number one rule in America, right, you know that you don't, you don't go out with strangers, right? And you definitely don't invite no one to your home. If I don't know you, how am I invite you to my home? But this man, he invited me into his home. He took me to his home. He fed me dinner. He took me to the masjid. I actually saw how he made the salat. Then he took me back to my ship. And he gave me fare to take the next bus. He said, look, if you want to come back to this masjid, take this bus. This is the money. I said, I don't need no money. He said, no, 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 take the money and take this bus and we'll take you to this masjid. He was a, yeah, he was an African American. Alhamdulillah. And that's free, suddenly. Yes, something just like that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he's the one who guides, man. He's the one who guides. You just have to want it. You just have to want it, man. And giving shahada, man, and giving shahada, you know, when you, you, you talk to people about Islam, you talk to people about Islam, right? And they, you know, you say, well, you know, why don't you, you know, come to the deen? Why don't you accept, take, accept, take your shahada? Nah, I don't, I, you know, I know about Islam, but, you know, I still got this problem. I, you know, I, I like, I'm drinking, you know, I got, you know, I got this problem. I, you know, I'm still doing this. I just got to, I want to get myself straight first. Sure. Now, I, I want to get straight, and then I'm going to become Muslim. You know, I, I want to, I want to get, you know, I want to clean myself up. I want, then I, you know, no, man. They want to take shahada, man. Give them shahada there on the spot. Don't have Amen. to wait. Don't Amen. have to wait for you know. Call up Mike. Come on, Mike. Uh, this guy wants to take shahada. Come on over. Come on, witness. No, you know, no, we know witness. Try clean him. <laughs> man, give that guy shahada right there and there, and tell him, you know, you know, uh, you know, you got a problem with drugs. You know, take shahada, and, and we'll deal with the problem with the drugs. You got a problem with smoking. Take your shahada now, and then we'll deal with the problem with smoking. You got a problem, wh whatever problem you got, take shahada now and then we'll deal with that problem later. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because what? If that joker was to die on a maybe I was going to take shahada, where he going? On a maybe I'm gonna take, I was going to take shahada. So give him shahada and follow up. That's the most important thing. Follow up when you give someone shahada. Follow up. Be there for him. Call him. Help him. Because just, just giving a shadow and la ilaha illallah, that's, that's, just the, that's just the first part about it. The rest of it, how about making the five salah, fasting the month of Ramadan, right? The wudu, all the other things, the learning of the Quran, the learning of the hadith, yeah? All of that. That's the shahada. So we should be like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bring him to the center and try, you know, once he takes shahada, bring him, bring him somewhere and assign him someone who can be like a brother to him. Because that's what the Prophet did. The Ansar, right? They were Ansar with the, with the Mahajirin. Now, so someone will follow him up, follow up that. You know, because, you know, once he takes shahada, okay, everybody, oh, you've been some great, 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 alhamdulillah, 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 and then he's gone. And then you, wh what happened to him? Where is he? He's like standing, okay, what, what now? So it's a follow-up. We got to do the follow-up. So what's good for me is good for them. So what? So now, alhamdulillah, I helped this brother, I helped this brother accept Islam, so we get the blessings from helping him. Now, you get the blessings, but it's good for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him for all of his sins. Remind him that. So if this guy is 40 years old, Allah forgives him for 40, 40 what, did he, what did he do in 40 years? What did he do in, subhanAllah, what did he do in 40 years? Ajib. Ajib. Tell me about it, right? That joker who killed 99 people, right? This, he was a gangster, man. 
This joker was a gangster. Killed 99 people, man. He went to who? He went to the monk, this guy up in the mountain, right? Don't really know nobody, right? He's into it, but he don't really know about the people. He said, you know, he says what? He says, is there any forgiveness? I killed 99 people. He said, no, ain't no forgiveness for you. What? 100 people. Right? I killed 100 people now. Now he goes to the man in the city. Now, what's the difference between the man in the city and the man that's up in the cave? The man in the city, he know. The man in the city, he know. He knows what's going on around him. He knows his atmosphere. He knows his neighborhood. He knows what's going on. He knows what the people are thinking. This man said, look, I done killed a hundred people. Is there any forgiveness for me? Whoa, sure there's forgiveness for you. Oh, there's forgiveness for you, but you got to go east, man. You got to go east, young man. You got to go east. You got to get out of this neighborhood. You got to go, you got to move out of this neighborhood. Right? My man who has a problem with drugs. My man who has a problem with alcohol. My man who has a problem with smoking. You can't be in the same, you can't stay in the same neighborhood. You can't hang out with the same friends that you're doing that you know you used to, you used to snort up with or used to smoke with. You can't hang out with them no more, man. Because what's going to happen? Because shaitan is real. Come on, man, what's wrong with you? You're going to change. Change tomorrow, man. Come on, do this thing with me. Because you know this, you know, whenever you do, you don't want to do drugs by yourself. You never want to drink by yourself. You never want to smoke by yourself. You never want to shoot up by yourself, right? Unless you're a hardcore junkie. If you're a hardcore junkie, then of course you want to keep it all to yourself, no doubt about it. You don't want to share with nobody. But if you're just a social drinker, you just a social drink, you know, a social get higher, right? You don't want to do it by yourself. You want to share it with somebody. So you're talking about you want to change? Come on, man, hit this thing with me one time, man. What's wrong with you? You're talking about you want to change. Change tomorrow, man. Hit this thing with me. And next thing you know, you're back out there in the street again. So the man said, yeah, there's forgiveness for you, man. Just go east. Change yourself. Change your atmosphere. Move. Move. Because you can't be here no more. Move. Well, that's what he did. But he died along the way. So the angels came and said, the angels came and said, hey, angel of death came, hit him. The angel of hellfire came and said, we're taking this soul with us, man. The angel of mercy came and said, no, 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 no. He was, he was, he was seeking forgiveness. Angel Hellfire said, this, this joker, <laughs> this, this joker, he was a killer. He was a gangster. His soul belongs to us. Allah sent another angel. And to compare, he said, look, do this. If he was closer to the land he was going to, then the, the angels of mercy take him. And if he wasn't, then the angels of hellfire take him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala scratched the land and made him closer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness is always there. It's always there. And the thing is, right, don't ever look at somebody, right? Don't ever look at somebody and think, oh, this joker can't become Muslim. What this white man want to know about Islam? He don't really want to know about no Islam. What this white man want to know? I'm going to waste my time talking to this white man about Islam. Why am I going to do that? What that woman say about Omar? She said what? Umar's donkey would become Muslim before Umar becomes Muslim. Subhanallah. Umar was what? He was on his way to take the prophet out, man. His attention was 100% to take this joker out. Stopped by his sister's crib. He hear some noise. He bust in the crib. Yo, what's going on up in here? Nothing, nothing, nothing. She's with her husband. Nothing, 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 nothing. You liar. Smacked his sister. Then he felt bad, right? Yeah. Felt bad. What is this? What is this? Right? So I'm trying like, you know, his intention was to kill the prophet, and then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed his heart. And who was Umar? SubhanAllah, where would we, where would this deen be right now without Umar really Lahu end? Where would he be? Where would we be? 
They said, when this door is broken, the door is broken. MashaAllah. So we give dawah, they accept Islam, they learn about Islam, they teach others, and they teach others, and they teach others, and they teach others, and they teach others. And, teach others. and you get the blessings from all of that. So on Yom Kiyama, because you gave shahada to one man, and this one man that you gave shahada to was gone out and giving shahada to a thousand people. And you get these blessings, you don't know where these blessings came from. It was because your efforts in giving dawah. As a dayah, you know, we have two Ps. And we must keep our two Ps. Keep them always. Sincerely and serious about keeping my two Ps, my prayers and my promises. If I give you a promise, I'm, that means I'm, gonna do, I'm obligated to do it. You know? And if I tell you I'm going to pray for you, believe me, I'm going to pray for you, man. I'm going to pray for you until I cannot pray anymore. And that's a promise. So you keep your two Ps. If you can't keep your promise, don't make a promise. If you can't keep your, don't make a promise, man. Just don't do it. And be careful how we use this word, inshallah, which means God, be careful how we use it. Now, the, I mean, the first, the first words I learned when I got to Arabia, the first words I learned in Arabic was, inshallah, bukra. Inshallah, Bukhara. Those are the first words I learned. Inshallah, Bukhara. Very disappointing. God willing, we'll do it tomorrow, right? But really what he's saying in his heart is that unless God makes me do it, man, you ain't getting nothing from me, man. Amen. <laughs> Come to my office tomorrow, man. I remember, you know, I'm saying I, I just got to Saudi Arabia and I'm, uh, you know, I mean, it's hot. The weather's hot, you know. Uh, and I'm trying to get into the university, so I'm running my papers. I'm going to the big university, and I'm going here. I don't speak Arabic, so I'm going to this place. I'm going to this place, trying to get this paper signed, trying to get this done, you know, so I can get into the university, get my cards, I can get into the university. So I'm running around doing all this, running around, you know, taking. And then the guy takes my papers, right? He takes my papers. He says, okay. He takes my papers. He takes it, right? He says, okay, come back tomorrow. Inshallah. <laughs> right? Inshallah. Come back tomorrow, right? So what I do? I come back the next day, right? This is Doha, right? Because the thing is, you got to learn the customs, you know? If, if you don't, you know, if it's Doha time, you know, ain't getting nothing done till tomorrow anyway. Even though you got the rest of the day, you ain't getting nothing done till tomorrow. Right? So now I give the guy my papers. It's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, almost Doha. I give my papers. He say, okay, come back tomorrow. I come back tomorrow. I said, okay, uh, can I get my paper? He said, sure. Big stack, right? Go on the stack, on the stack. I look. Excuse me, was, was that all you had to do? Was just to sign it and stamp it? <laughs> I said, man, what's wrong with you? That's what I did, man. <laughs> I cleared this man. He was like this. I said, man, what's wrong with you? You wasted my time. Just came from, I just came from America, so you have to forgive me. You know, I, <laughs> I just came from America, so you know, I, didn't, I really didn't understand. He signed the paper, man. Yeah. Because he signed it in front of me. He could have did it yesterday. He could all he had to do was sign in his stamp. He could have did it. He told me to come back tomorrow. I was like, whoa. <laughs> man. <laughs> but to be a die, you can't do that, man, right? <laughs> you got to have patience to be a die, man. You have to be generous. And you have to be humble. You have to be kind and gentle. You have to do this thing like what I call 
trying to master the art of kindness. I'm, I'm constantly trying to master the art of kindness. How many things, you know, I, myself, you know, I look for, before, before Fudger, I try to do three things good. I try to do three good things. Pick up some paper off the ground, say good morning, smile, do something. Three, I try to do three things, three good deeds before Fudger. And then when I'm in the mosque street, I look for paper on the ground because I want to pick up three pieces of paper and put it in the trash. I want, to, I want to make myself humble, and I want to do good. I want to master this art of kindness. And I want to live by the words I preach. I want to live by the words that I preach. I want to be modest. I want to be respectful, and I want to give respect because I want the people to respect me. I want to be merciful. Amen. And I want to be clean because we know that cleanliness is next to godliness. So, remember that uh, that was it. Ah, yes. <coughs> I want to be, these are the characteristics that you have to have to be a Diane. And it's a thing that we have to work on because, you know, you're not going to change overnight. There's no changing overnight, right? Like I tell the Sheikh, I want to be just like this Sheikh when I grow up, man. I love the way he carries himself, man. You can see it. You can see it in him, you know. And that, that didn't come overnight. That did not come overnight. He didn't wake up and said, okay, I'm going to be like this. He took time and practice on being kind, on being generous. And this is what we have to be, right? So, again, what I was saying that, you know, when you give, when you give, I mean, tell the people about Islam. Don't look at that people, don't look at that person and say, he ain't going to become Muslim. Because you can't, you don't, you don't, what's in his heart? You don't know where he's coming from. Excuse me, sir, can I have just a minute? Can I tell you about Islam? And listen, when you start a conversation and you don't know how to start, when you're giving da'wah and you don't know how to start your conversation, ask them. What do you know about Islam? What do you know about Islam? That's the way to start a conversation. You want to give some dawah? I don't know how to give dawah. Ask the person. What do you know about Islam? And then go from there. Well, I know that you, you Mohammedanisms, you, you worship a God called Allah, and you can have a hundred wives, yeah. and, um, and, you, and you take off heads of you chop off hands of people that, that steal. You know what I'm saying? Okay, just listen to them. Listen to what they say about Islam. Because they're going to come with some off-the-wall stuff. Oh, y'all, y'all terrorists. You know, you, 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 you carry bombs on you. You're going to blow, blow. Then okay, y'all. Um, yeah, okay, all right. And then after you hear what they got to say, then you explain to them. Islam is like this. It's a religion of peace. And you start from what they told you, you correct them. Right? Alhamdulillah. Uh, so let's say, where do we start? Remember, the last thing, you must set an example of your truth. You must set an example of your truth. You have to be that change, right? And that's the way that we do it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, yes, sir. And that's how we do it. Alhamdulillah, a little bit more, a little bit less. May Allah forgive me for anything that I might have said that was wrong, and anything that I said right definitely came from this dean, yeah? What the world needs now is love, a sweet love, that's the only thing that there's just too little love. Yo, peace through belief in one. That's true peace through belief in one. Hey, sugar the milk because that's what it's there for. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the creator of everything and everything that was that is and will ever be and we give 
thanks and praise and celebrate the blessings on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who by his character and goodwill Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blessed him to deliver the message of Islam and it's because of his message that brought us together right because of if we weren't Muslims, then we wouldn't be sitting here together in this room. And I wouldn't be here because I'd probably be in America somewhere. And uh, so I know I wouldn't be here. So, so we give thanks to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we, we praise him. We don't worship him. We praise him because of the good works that he's done. You know? And this is what... And this is where we're at, and this is what we want for ourselves, as well as for all the Muslims who are calling people to the deen of Islam. Now, there's one, there's one thing, there's one thing in giving, in giving dawah, right? I gave out the candy. I gave out the candy, it's, it's psychological. Put sweetness in your mouth because I'm getting ready to speak. So the next time that you're gonna eat a piece of candy, you'll remember this talk, you see? Yeah, right? Also, we're all eating the candy, so now we're all like on the same page, on the same level here. And it's always good, you know, when, you know, when we give dawah, we want to, we want to, um, we don't, you know, we don't always want to confront somebody, you know? Come on to the common things, things that are common. So let's, you know, bring them in on something that, that we can relate to. You know, when you, so when you're talking, when you're talking to, to, to non-Muslims, you want to bring them on something, yes, bring them on something that, that they can relate to and you can relate to, and, you know, you can get them shaking their head yes, instead of shaking their head no. You know, and get them, to, you know, they're shaking their head yes, because they're, they're understanding. They're understanding what you're saying, and they're agreeing with you. So if they agree with you on this, then I'm, and then you know, then you, you give them something else. Say, okay, then how about this? Then how about this? Next thing you know, inshallah, they're taking shahada. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom, he created, he created the angels. Of light. And he created another being, which is called the jinn. He created them from fire. And then he created man. He created man from dirt, from soil. Yeah? Now, shaitan, he's an interesting being. He's interesting because this country bears witness to the, to the things that, that he did. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. He's interesting because Iblis, he was, he was the head of the jinn. And that at one time, if believe it or not, and this just goes to show, you know, that you know, we don't have it made until, until the angel of death comes and we've said our last words are the kalimat. So no matter, you know, and the thing is, right, remember that it's not what we started off with doing, it's what we end up doing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to count. Not, you know, not, not what we did in the beginning, right? It's what happens at the end. And again, now looking, looking at, at the Iblis' story, this joker, man, this jinn, and he wasn't the angel. See, the thing in the Bible, they see.